Spoilers for Loki Episode 2 are ahead. What is, this, what is this about? This isn't about you. Welcome to the Screen Crush Break Room. I'm Ryan Airy. The first two episodes of Loki gave us a lot to process. Time cops, alternate realities, and a new female Loki. But what is this new variant of Loki up to? What's her final plan? Why does she have a grudge against the timekeepers? And most importantly, is she a good Loki or a bad Loki? Long ago, there was a vast multiversal war. Countless unique timelines battled each other for supremacy. A new multiverse would challenge the supremacy of the timekeepers. So it seems likely that this is Randy Loki's goal to start a second multiversal war. Comic readers may remember that a similar war happened in the 2015 comic Secret Wars. So in this video, we'll explain how Randy's plan will lead into the Secret Wars and tie into the Multiverse of Madness and the Eternals, and how all of this will build up to Kang the Conqueror as the next big bad villain of the MCU. So let's not waste another minute. Settle in, sharpen your pencils, and check this out. According to Miss Minutes, long ago, there were countless timelines which clashed in a multiverse war. This almost destroyed all of existence, but reality was saved by the Timekeepers, who reorganized the multiverse into a single timeline. The Sacred Timeline. But every once in a while, variants such as Loki veer off their predetermined paths and cause Nexus events which left unchecked could branch off into madness, leading to another multiversal war. Now it's important to recap this information because a multiverse war is very similar to the Secret Wars event from the comics. And I'm talking about the 2015 Secret Wars, not the classic 1984 storyline, which was awesome. 2015 Secret Wars was about a multiverse war where different versions of characters clashed to save their universes and eventually reality itself. And that's what Loki might be setting the groundwork for, a giant multiversal crossover between different versions of your favorite heroes. Think Spider-Verse, but with everybody. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! And we think this was Randy's plan. At the end of episode two, she makes her move, sending a bunch of reset charges through the time portals. But where did she send them? We don't know yet, but it seems very likely that those charges were sent to multiple points in time, causing Nexus events that the TVA can no longer reset. So her plan is to create enough Nexus events that branch past the red line, which will surely send the timelines to a point of no return. And that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of reality as we know it. So why would Lady Loki want to do such a thing? Well, to explain it, let's actually look at Loki's first day with the TVA, because his experience might inform us about how the TVA might have already abused Lady Loki. Loki was arrested and put on trial without any explanation. The TVA sort of found him guilty before he even got a chance to make his case. The court finds you guilty, and I sentence you to be reset. Next case, please. Reset. What does that mean? What is that? Is it bad? What does it mean? I mean, how could Loki defend himself when he didn't even know he's committing a crime against the sacred timeline? How about a lawyer? I mean, who's holding this trial? The Cardassians? In Cardassia, the verdict is always known before the trial begins. And it's always the same. In that case, why bother with a trial at all? Sure, Loki was a bad boy in 2012, killed a bunch of people, and tried to take over Earth. But him picking up the Tesseract and escaping isn't really a crime against time, it's just Loki being Loki. Can you really blame the guy? He's literally called the god of mischief. How could he know that there was time travel involved? You see, I only came into possession of the Tesseract because they traveled through time. What they did was supposed to happen. You escaping was not. But suddenly, now he's a time criminal getting a sham trial that would surely result in him being erased, if not for Mobius. Not to mention this other guy who got melted just for being annoying. Now, all this may sound like I'm kidding around, but would you want to be melted from the inside out for a crime that you didn't even know you could commit? Even to a guy like me, that's cold. So we've seen the TVA have very little sympathy for variants. To them, they're just cosmic mistakes. I don't want anybody out there to forget what you are. Oh, your only hope of capturing a murderer? No, a cosmic mistake. These time bureaucrats only care about keeping the timeline tidy and variants make their jobs harder. So, from a certain point of view, a case could be made that the TVA are a bunch of assholes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is where Lady Loki comes in. Oh, don't call me that. You can call me... Randy. 
What if she received a similar terrible and unjust treatment from the TVA? What if Lady Loki didn't take kindly to the TVA trying to erase her from existence for, well, just for existing? I mean, that's a big deal. You ridiculous bureaucrats will not dictate how my story ends. It's not your story, Mr. Laufusen. It never was. Loki sees himself as a god, someone who was born to rule. That's part of the lie that he tells himself, and Randy might be doing the same. And gods don't like to be told what to do or learn that they're insignificant when faced with real gods such as the Timekeepers. We know that 2012 Loki isn't the first variant to escape his predetermined path. A type we should all be very familiar with because the TVA has pruned a lot of these guys, almost more than any other variant. Apparently, the TVA has dealt with other versions of Loki in the past. So this means that Loki always finds a way to break the Timekeeper's rules and escape his predetermined cycle. Speaking of, we made a video about Loki breaking from his metaphorical loop. Be sure to check that out later and you will not be disappointed. You and I, here at the TVA, we're the only ones who are actually free. The show might be setting up Loki as a Nexus being. In the comics, Nexus beings are entities who can alter the flow of time, and they're pretty much free from the Timekeeper's control. For instance, Scarlet Witch is a very powerful Nexus being thanks to her chaos magic, and WandaVision had some hints about her being a Nexus being in the antidepressant commercial. Ask your doctor about Nexus a unique antidepressant that works to anchor you back to your reality, or the reality of your choice. This could also mean that Lady Loki is also a Nexus being. This would make her more dangerous than a regular rogue variant. As Nexus beings, the variants of Loki exist outside the timeline. So the TVA don't know their future, which gives the variants the advantage. And if this Lady Loki is a more successful version of the 2012 Loki, then that makes her so much more dangerous. This is why she was able to escape the TVA and terrorize the Minutemen. But the show Loki, at its center, is a meditation of free will versus fate. So everything is written. Past, present, future. There's no such thing as free will. The Loki variants can escape their predetermined paths, which means that Loki is proof that the timeline isn't set in stone, and that there is free will after all. Well, they're all gonna die anyway. And so, maybe Randy's plan is to destroy the TVA, kill the Timekeepers, and free the multiverse from predetermination. This will free everyone from the control of the timeline, make everyone a variant. But while that's a nice sentiment, this will have disastrous results. With no Timekeepers, the timeline will be in shambles, new timelines will be created, and it'll only be a matter of time before another multiversal war threatens to destroy all of reality. We're doomed. Now, of course, since we're talking about a variant of Loki here, it wouldn't be too shocking if Lady Loki uses the multiverse war to attempt to take over of all reality. Loki's do what Loki's do. Come on. What did you expect? But Lady Loki might be in way over her head. The Timekeepers are the most powerful beings in the universe, more powerful than the Infinity Stones. I mean, in just one scene, Marvel made Thanos' life's work insignificant. How do you have these? Oh, we actually got a lot of those. Yeah, some of the guys use them as paperweights. These rocks are nothing compared to the cosmic power of the Timekeepers. Is this the greatest power in the universe? So if the Timekeepers are so powerful, they must play a bigger role in the MCU, which is why we think the Timekeepers could be the Celestials. A Celestial like a god? Hmm. Small G, son. You remember the Celestials. We saw one using the Power Stone in the Collector's flashback. Nowhere is inside a dead Celestial's head, and Peter is half Celestial. If he's a planet, how could he make a baby with your mother? He would smush her. The Celestials are cosmic gods who have seeded life across the universe, including humans, scrolls, the Eternals, and so many others. Their history in the comics is shrouded in mystery, but we do know they have been around ever since the beginning of time itself, and they won a war that created the multiverse. So what if, in the MCU, the Celestials fought in the multiversal war? With their godlike powers, they won, then erased all the other timelines and created the Sacred Timeline, ruling as cosmic gods of their new, tidy mini-multiverse. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. With the creation of the Sacred Timeline, three of the Celestials were charged to protect it as the Timekeepers. The rest are traveling the universe to create and destroy life, and all of this could be explored in the Eternals movie since they were created by Celestials. But there's more. In the 2015 Secret Wars event, powerful reality-bending beings called the Beyonders were responsible for the end of the multiverse. Well, our guess is that the Celestials will play a similar role in the MCU. 
If the Celestials indeed won the ancient multiversal war and created the current timeline, it only makes sense that they would end existence all over again once a new multiversal war began. The Celestials are the janitors of the universe, and Lady Loki might not be aware of their sheer cosmic power. There's always a bigger fish. While Loki and the TVA might stop Lady Loki by the end of the first season, there's a good chance that the multiversal war won't be prevented, only prolonged. If Randy creates a bunch of branching new timelines, she will set the multiverse on a path that will eventually lead to the secret wars. Maybe by the end of Loki, the TVA will be in shambles, no longer able to protect the timeline. So Loki will step up and seek out Doctor Strange and Wanda, showing up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And it's possible they will form a team that will protect the timelines and the multiverse. Who are you? Loki. You think you're some kind of sorcerer? Don't think for one minute you second rate. All right, bye bye. Perhaps we will see heroes from different universes join this team, all attempting to prevent this multiversal war. This is something that's being teased for What If, as the heroes in that show will form Guardians of the Multiverse. If Secret Wars is going to happen, it only makes sense that we will get a team that attempts to prevent the multiverse collapse and prevent a timeline war. But just like Thanos, I am inevitable. The multiversal war is inevitable. This brings us to the ultimate nexus being Kang the Conqueror. There is no way anyone can talk about timelines without mentioning Kang. He is the Genghis Khan of time travel and might be the MCU's next Thanos level villain. Kang will be played by Jonathan Majors in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. In fact, Chronopolis, the city that Kang rules, appeared here in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, because the quantum realm is used for time travel, this is hinting that Kang is going to use the quantum realm to control time itself. Kang exists outside the regular flow of time, and there are multiple versions of him throughout the past, present, and future. In the comics, there's even a huge council of Kangs. And Kang is the perfect villain for this multiversal war. He considers time to be his domain, and anyone who messes with his temporal kingdom will suffer the consequences. Time to show the 21st century how I earned the title of Conqueror. Lady Loki might be the one that creates multiple branching timelines, but Kang is the one who will start the full-blown timeline war. This will be the MCU's secret wars, as the multiverse clashes and heroes from different universes fight to save their own realities. This will bring the cleansing of the Celestials as the timeline becomes too unstable and the cosmic gods will decide to reset all of reality again. That's the best way to raise the stakes after Endgame. And it could all start with Loki. Stepping off your path created a Nexus event, which left unchecked could branch off into madness, leading to another multiversal war. Anyways, this is what we think Loki might be planning. Do you think the Timekeepers are Celestials? What will be Lady Loki's real name other than Randy? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.